Right, four different types of bananas left in the ground. Um, it's been a mild winter. It's getting towards the end of March. So we've got about a week left in March or so. But we thought we'd have an update. I don't really sort of mention the bananas other than I did move, move a, a few of them. Probably about a month ago now while they're still dormant. So let's have a look. So we'll start off with the Musa Baju. So these are the ones I actually moved because we've got, we see the three here and they were a lot further forward. But um, I had a big clump of um, canna behind that which got drowned out by the bananas. So I thought, well, bananas grow so quick. I'll have them at the back of the border with the height. Um, so yeah, we moved. That is uh, originally one banana, obviously, popped off last year after sort of getting frosted to the ground. So these are the pups from last year, which uh, I've divided and moved over near the fence to give me some height. And then I'll probably will have a Ensep Morelii in front of them to give some contrast with the colour. Right, so we can see the Musa Bajir obviously is starting to grow. Um, yeah, so all three, we've got green and a roller coming up. You know, it's been a mild winter, no surprise there. And even though they've, you know, obviously been moved as well. Right, so in front here, we've got Musa Sikonensis, the Bengal tiger. And as we can see, we've got a quite a big bit of growth there that's just literally come out in the last week with all this really sort of almost warm weather um so yeah that's survived totally and again i will say these bananas i did wrap them in bubble wrap so a lot of people say i oh, don't wrap plants in plastic well i'm not recommending that but all i'm saying is i always do it bubble wrap and they always when i've when i have protected them i bubble wrapped them and never had a problem so as we can see, even the Sikonensis Bengal Tiger got loads of growth on that, no problem. So that's the second species. Third species we've got, it's just a straight Sikonensis, so it's very similar to the Bengal Tiger. Again, this was bubble wrapped and it, to be fair, it probably did lose a little bit of height. But um, this is the cheap one we got from B&M, I think that's about six quid last year. So it only had about a foot of trunk. So we might have lost a few inches on the on the height on that, but that was very small. But it is starting to push out. So what I've done is I've just got a little little tiny pop up just to get that going a bit far faster. A bit of extra heat as it's only small. All right, so I know it's a bit of a cheat. Not really two different species, but well, they are subspecies, I guess. So we've got the Sikonensis and Sikonensis Bengal Tiger. So they are very different looking because the Bengal Tiger's got the, the red stripy leaves, which is a lot more pronounced than the standard Sikonensis. All right, so there's the bananas there. Obviously, we've got a couple to go in. The, we've got an Enset Morelii and an Enset Haniba, which are going to go here and here. I don't know which way around I'm going to put them yet. We'll see. But it might detect, dictate by the uh, the persicaria, obviously we should start to, to come up here, already two foot tall. Um, so that's sort of deep purple, so I may well put the uh, Heniba here because it's green with a red mid rib, while the um, Ensep really has red leaves, so I don't really want to clash and with the persicaria there. Walking a persicaria, we've got a, another nice clump coming up here. That's the purple fantasy. Another problem I'm having is the with the mild weather, all the bindweed is really starting to come, and I've always had an issue with bindweed that does literally grow inches a day, it's ridiculous, and that just gets everywhere. But yeah, all the the persicaria is really starting to take off now. It's looking good, can't beat that new flush. Purple Fantasy, and uh, this one is the um, Red Dragon. 
you just can't beat the, the fresh colors of them. Right, so we did mention four bananas. So this is the the fourth. So this is the uh, Musella. I knew I was going to. I, I just thought, I just call them a, a golden lotus banana, Musella lesser carpa. I always struggle over the name. Don't know why. But yeah, again, what we've got done with this is we literally just had fleece over it and then a plastic bag over top so the fleece don't get wet. Um, this is what I've done last year and with the harsh wind we had last year, pulled through no problem. Um, I haven't looked at it yet, so we're gonna do this live on video. So all I've done is, like I say, we've got the fleece. I put a, just a plastic bag and pegged it down so it doesn't blow away in the wind. So let's pull the pegs out. And we'll have a good look inside. See, there's a lot of spiders inside that bag, but we're not worried about that. So that's the bag off. Yeah, lots of little little spiders loving it in there. All right, so fleece off, and this is what it looks like. So what we had is one golden lotus banana in the centre and. I did kick out some pups last year so this is the main plant here which as we can see is green solid it is starting to grow a bit on the wonk so i may well have to dig it up and upright because it's really growing on the slant now but um yeah really solid really solid green base and even the pups the smaller ones nice and solid nice and solid and even two little tiny ones at the back here solid so you know a bit of fleece and just a bag over it to keep it dry obviously the bag's gonna hit the sun and warm up a little bit so you get a frosty day cold day it's generally sunny that sort of warms up a bit definitely helps all right so there's four different types of banana for you um, I have got another one, another golden lotus here, which I didn't even bother with a fleece, because I just wanted to try just a, a plastic bag. And again, that is pegged down. No, it's not even pegged down. I just literally chucked a, pack, a clear bag over it. This is in the center of the garden, totally exposed. And we can see, obviously, the the top growth has died off but if we go down we can see it's green and it's really nice and solid i think that pup is a bit that there's a pup this side which is still good but this one might have gone so even minimal protection literally just a paper not paper a plastic bag over the top of it it's not going to rot it out it's going to keep it dry yes it's going to get a little bit bit of a condensation on hot days but because it's warm this is not really an issue it doesn't tend to stay too wet in there so yeah four different types of banana really basic protection and to be honest I, I think the winter we had I probably would have got away of not protecting any of these and they probably would have been fine but just to prove a point that plastic is not going to kill your bananas I even had uh, bubble wrap wrapped around the tetrapanics I did have a message saying this that's going to rot it off and that's come through no problem and growing nicely now so you know it's, it's all a calculated risk it does depend where you are it depends how cold the winter is it depends how wet it is and it has been a wet winter but yet all the bananas have survived even the the tender ones I've, I've had uh, sickness in the past and they have died on me and that, again, that's been a mild winter, but we seem to have uh, got away with it this year. So we should have plenty of banana growth. Um, right, so looking at this area, you still see I've got cloches here, which you've got the 
um, some colocasia escalenta in there we can see they're still nice and green so they will start growing now it's starting to warm up but this area here is uh quite barren at the moment so i have got plans for it i will share them with you quickly now but obviously i'll do a video at a time when i go to put the plants in but they're not it's not quite warm enough to get the plants i want in there at the moment but the idea is i did have a big clump of cannas here i think that's a canna intica purpurea and i had a big clump of uh, musifolia canna musifolia there which are the banana cannas and i've still left some right at the back but they where i planted them originally and they, they've been creeping forward creeping forward because they do spread quite quickly so I've, I've chopped a lot of them out there's still some right at the back there but at the front here that's given me a lot more area to plant so what i'm going to do is i've got three main plants of what i get in this area um two evergreen so because this is quite a, a, a chunk at the the border here which is um you know during the winter is pretty much empty so i want a couple of evergreens in there just to fill up the, an area and uh so yeah so the idea is i mean originally i mean i was gonna i did buy a big queen palm to go in the center bit but now we've got the power jibba, not power jibbaya just jibbaya in there um i've got a big queen palm and when i say big it's about 10 or 11 foot tall so i may i did toy with the idea of potting it into a bigger pot and just sinking the pot into the ground but i think i might just go for it and plant plant it straight in the ground so i'm gonna probably get the queen palm at the back here which is gonna give me some big height up here and then in the center we've got uh tetrapanix rex which is in the hot house at the moment which is starting to flush out some quite nice big leaves so that's going to go in the center here to really fill out the mid section because we've got the queen palm which is quite tall so we'll have the tetrapanix here which is big leaves which is going to fill out a lot of this area and then we've got a quite a big area here um which i've got a chefflera de velii um so one of the bigger leaf chefflera's quite a small plant at the moment but that's going to go there and that'll be some evergreen interest as well so obviously the tetrapanix will drop its leaves over the winter but um hopefully the queen palm will survive and give us some evergreen and the uh, chef Lara. so that, that's just the plans for that area i'm, I'm sort of going off track because we we were looking at the bananas four different types of banana all survived i would say all growing they're not they're, they're all growing apart from the the golden lotus which literally have just uncovered in front of you but um what i might do is get a i've got a some plastic cloche slightly bigger than these ones which i might just put over the top because i do find with the golden lotus bananas they do need a bit of heat to get them going um so if you want to get them started off early i think that's the way to go just get a little pop-up greenhouse or a, a cloche over them just to get that heat going in there or I might even just put the plastic bag back over to act like a little greenhouse um, and that'll, that'll get them pushing new growth in no time right, let's leave it there thanks for watching